Hey guys, I'm Natalia. Welcome back to my little studio space. Today I'm going to show you how to make my iconic mini purses. Um, they're not iconic yet because this is the first one that I'm making, but <laughs> uh, you're going to love it. So yeah, stay tuned. I cut out my pieces. I have two fronts, two sides, one bottom bag, and two straps. This is the little denim bag that I am making for this video in a black colorway. I'm doing frayed edges, very simple, soft bag, the same process as making a tote bag. I have my logo on the front and my Made in USA tag upside down on purpose as a design feature. So I'm gonna show you how to make this. If you're like, Natalia, this is disgusting. I hate frayed edges. <laughs> I'm gonna show you a way to do a clean edge finish, but this is just my design feature because I love frayed edges. The first step will be to take the front and the side and sew a quarter of an inch wrong side to wrong side if you want the frayed edge on the outside. Obviously, if you want a clean finish, you can do right side to right side. So far, the bag looks like this. I'll sew a quarter of an inch right here to close it off and then we will get to sewing the bottom of the bag. To keep the bag from not fraying too much, I am going to sew a quarter inch line all around, and I am gonna sew like here to here, back stitch, here to here, back stitch. I'm going to avoid the excess seam allowance because I don't wanna press it this way and that way on the top of the bag for aesthetic purposes, so sew here. I'm going to sew here and here at a quarter of an inch. I went ahead and I pinned the bottom of the bag. I am going to lightly baste it in place and I'm going to push the seam allowances to the insides for aesthetics. The bottom of the bag is basted so at a quarter of an inch seam allowance and making sure that these seams are pressed to the inside while you're sewing. I will try to sew this with one hand for you guys. You should really sew this with two hands. Now that I got to this corner, I have this extra bulk kind of diagonally and I'm gonna go ahead and sew a quarter of an inch and do that for all the corners. This is what the bag looks like with the quarter inch bottom sewn on. I am going to take the straps, press them in half, and then I will sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance on the edge. Now I'm gonna take my straps and I am going to put them on the bag. I'm going to mark a quarter of an inch away from the seam line. And I'm gonna do two and three quarters. I want the frayed edge to be on the outside. There's different ways you can finish it. You could do fold this over for something cleaner. You can do an X. Um, this doesn't have to be this long. It could be shorter, but I like the frayed edge. So this is how I'm gonna sew it. Start from here, sew. And then I'll sew on this line, I'll edge stitch, edge stitch, and that is how I'm gonna sew my straps onto the bag. Because I like the minimal look. You can do the X if you want to, but I'm gonna do little rectangles because I think that's cute. This is the mini bag. I am going to 
hand sew my label on, tack it down on four corners, and I'm also going to put in my Made in USA label, and I'll get back to you. This is what the inside of the bag looks like, just in case you're wondering. I am back. Here are my mini bags. I have little cameras in them, my Polaroids. They're really lightweight and soft and cute. It's the one that we just did. You know, say cheese. But anyway, now I'm going to show you how to do different seam finishes. So if you think like the frayed edges are like not your thing, I'm going to show you how to do a bias tape finish. You could do a zigzag finish. Um, if you have the option on your sewing machine, you could do an overlock finish if you want something more casual. You could do a French seam. So we're going to go over a few of these and um, yeah, stay tuned if you want the little bonus tutorial at the end. Hey guys, um, bonus tutorial, how to do a French seam. It's very easy. Also, sorry for the messy studio. What you're gonna do is take two pieces of fabric. You're gonna sew a quarter of an inch. Trim the seam allowance down. Now you are going to press Now you're gonna sew a quarter of an inch. And there you go. You have a clean finish of a seam on the front and then you have the French seam on the inside. So that is one way to finish a seam. I'm gonna make some bias strips. All right, very quick tutorial on how to make bias strips. So with the salvage is this is the length grain. This way is the cross grain. And what I have marked here is true bias. How to get true bias. <clears throat> what I did, I took my ruler. As you can see, my ruler is parallel to the length grain and I marked those two points. And then I drew those two points and then I drew a straight line and another line parallel and that is how you get the true bias. That's my bias. I am gonna sew right side to right side a quarter of an inch. Now I'll take my bias that's a little bit longer than my uh, piece and I will sew it at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now that I have this, I will fold it over like that and I'm going to press. Now that I've pressed this, I am going to fold and press like this. We're going to fold one more time and press. And now we are going to edge stitch. I've edge stitched on my tape, on my bias tape, and that's how the seam looks on the outside and on the inside. Or if you want, you can keep the bias tape on the outside as with a contrasting color as a design feature. Other ways of finishes are overlocking. Um, if you have an overlock machine, this is my overlock. Heavy. But I've done overlock stitches on a lot of my videos, so you can go check it out and see what that looks like. And a zigzag stitch, self-explanatory. 
you just press the button, the zigzag button on your machine and you'll get a zigzag stitch. How to sew straps without the frayed edge if that's not your thing. So you're gonna sew, put this right side to right side and you're gonna sew a quarter of an inch. And what this is doing, you're making a tube. So a quarter of an inch. If you have one of these, that's great. It's called a loop turner. This is especially great for spaghetti straps. Um, so now I'm going to flip this inside out. This is easier on slip, slippery, more slippery fabrics. Magic. All right, so now it looks a mess, so we're going to press it so it doesn't look so ugly. All right, so I pressed my seam directly in the middle, but if you want, you can have the seam right on the edge. It's up to you, as long as it's flat. We are going to put the strap on another piece of fabric. I'm gonna sew an inch. Actually, I think this would look nicer if it was an inch and a quarter, so I'm gonna do that. You can see I sewed it an inch, an inch and a quarter. Ignore that other line. Now we're going to fold it over like this. And then I'm gonna do a little box with an X. I'm sure you've seen this before. It's a very sturdy way to finish a bag strap. That is the little finish of the X with the box. Okay, so now let's say you don't like <laughs> the frayed edge on the top. I'm gonna show you how to finish that, do like a clean finish. You're going to fold down a quarter of an inch and press. It looks like that. And then you're gonna fold down another inch and press. So it should look like this and and now you are going to edge stitch right here and this is what it looks like on the front and the back obviously take your time like and actually measure it when you fold I just did it quickly so I didn't measure the fold um, but yeah this is just the concept I hope that this inspired you to make your own bag and of course you can change the proportions of the bag to make it into a tote bag or a mini mini bag like really truly small so hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for over 400 subscribers i appreciate it thank you guys so much bye